What's up everyone, we're going to go over some things you need to know before you come, so let's get started. Geography. The first point to discuss is the geography of the three main islands in the United States, St. Thomas, St. John, and St. Kawa. St. John and St. Thomas are fairly close together, in fact, the main airport will be on St. Thomas when you arrive. Now the big city, the capital, is Charlotte O'Malley, and there are around 50 islands in case in total around the U.S. Virgin Islands. If you look offshore right now, you can see smaller islands just off the coast that are uninhabited literal Virgin Islands, so that's something I thought you should know first. Beaches. So let's talk about beaches as you can see here, where the sea is clear and the sand is lovely. You have Mangus Bay, Maho Bay, and Trunk Bay now, if you were to ask me which island has the best beaches, I would say it comes down to St. Thomas and St. John, but I would say overall St. John just seemed to have a lot more of that beautiful water now there are beautiful beaches on St. Thomas, but St. John really took the cake when it comes down to it and most of the beaches on both islands are going to be. Fun Facts some further information about the United States Virgin Islands, it is a United States territory that was purchased from Denmark in 1917. So it has a history with Denmark and Norway, as well as native indigenous peoples who lived here before Christopher Columbus, who is thought to have discovered this area in 1493. Another thing to keep in mind is that you do not need a passport to visit here. In fact, you do not need a passport because it is a U.S. territory. They also transact in U.S. dollars, and they prefer cash transactions. They will accept some of your credit cards in certain places, but for the most part, you'll want to carry US dollars with you, so go to the ATM whenever you have a chance because the beaches do charge as well. I just wanted to mention that the currency is mostly in cash, though some places will accept your Amex or Visa. Transportation. Okay, let's talk about transportation. When you arrive in the islands, you'll arrive in St. Thomas at Cecil King Airport, which is actually really close to where I'm at right now. When I arrived from Puerto Rico, I flew in on a twin-engine aircraft that was very small with Silver Airlines, but I've seen Delta Large 757s, 767s United American so big airlines do fly in here now and it's C-OK. So when you get to your hotel, you can ask who's your preferred taxi, and they'll give you a list of numbers to call or you can meet someone at the airport, but the best way to get around the island is to rent a car from Hertz or Avis, one of the rental car companies here. Most of the rental cars are Jeeps. We bought a Jeep, which costs $137 a day plus $30 a day. For insurance, if you want to travel to two other islands, such as St. John, you can take a barge and drive your car onto it for $60 for a round journey. Anyway, if you don't want to drive your own automobile on the barge, you can take a high-speed ferry to St. Kawe or St. John. Transportation to British Virgin Island all right, let's talk about transportation to the British Virgin Islands, which are very close to the United States Virgin Islands, but the problem is that you need proper medical clearance to get over there. From what I understand, the British Virgin Islands are a little bit stricter than the United States Virgin Islands when it comes to getting in with that medical clearance if you know what I mean. So make sure that if you do decide to do that, you talk to the proper ferry company that can get you there. Yeah, even though it's close, getting into the British Virgin Islands isn't as easy as you may think, despite the fact that I've heard their gorgeous Virgin Gorda Tortola. Safety. Let's talk about safety. I read articles before I came here in 2009 that there had been some armed robbery occurrences, but it appears that they've been brought under control, so safety in St. Thomas, St. John, and St. Kawa. It's been safe in my experience, though I've heard from residents and other tourists that there are particular locations in the towns and city centers that you shouldn't go to at night, so if you do go out, go with a group of friends. Don't get too drunk or carried away with anything, but from my experience, safety with the people is very safe. You shouldn't have any problems in my opinion. I haven't seen or heard anything since I've been here, but one thing I did hear about was someone hiking and falling off a cliff, so be cautious of that. I would also advise you to be cautious of driving too fast around here because the locals drive fast, and you don't want to be in a situation where you're an inexperienced driver driving on the wrong side of the road. Because out here you drive on the left side of the road, not the right. Something new to experience, so if you're not used to it, I wouldn't get too carried away with speeding around. The streets and roads here are rather narrow, so I would say that driving and trekking are two of the most dangerous activities you can do here, but they are not very dangerous. The people. The people here are friendly, but they live on island time, which means they take things slowly except when they're driving. One of the things you can do to make your stay here easier is to be friendly and ask them how they're doing. You know how was your day, how's your night, how are you sir, how are you man, and things like that go a long way for respect because that's part of the island way, so being respectful, polite, and going out of your way to check. Pricing. Let's take a look at the pricing in the United States. So, based on my experience, you can't find anything under $150 per night after taxes, and it only gets more expensive from there. 
When it comes to Ayrton, yeah, they have them, but when you throw in cleaning fees, you're still paying approximately $200 to $300 per night. So the US Virgin Islands are not reasonable for accommodation, um when it comes to rental cars, $135 a day with insurance, the gas seems to be $379 today, when I filled up at a typical gas station, the food prices you know for a supper $15 each meal and more from there, rates vary depending on where you go, but in general, I'd say they're comparable to Hawaii. The one downside to the accommodation is that it's limited due to the hurricane, so keep that in mind if you come down here. Food. When you visit the US Virgin Islands, you'll want to try a variety of Caribbean cuisines, including conch fritters, which may sound unusual to those of you who have visited Key West, kalu, which is a soup, and lots and lots of rum, and pate, which has a French influence. So you have a variety of different cuisines that come together out here in the islands, and this is one of them. If you prefer sponge cake, you can also have some Johnny cake. You might prefer Johnny cake or fungus fungible, or whatever you want to call it, but it's a cross between okra and a mushroom. It's pretty good food that you can have at any of the local restaurants in town. There are so many different cuisines to explore that all you have to do is sit down at the bar and ask, hey, what's a local cuisine? For myself, I ordered fried shrimp and blackened shrimp with French fries. I also got a burger while I was here, so they have plenty of those as well as barbecue, as they have a Texas-style BBQ and a variety of other cuisines. Sushi, Chinese food, Thai food, and a variety of other cuisines will be available to you on this island, he wanted to know which island is best for food. It's usually between St. Kawa and St. Thomas, but from what I understand, St. Thomas takes the cake most of the time. St. John's food options are limited as well. I noticed at least three different McDonald's and three separate KFC, as well as a Pizza Hut, so if you have kids, that meal may work for you. Conclusion To sum up, if you visit the United States Virgin Islands, plan to arrive in St. Thomas, rent a car, and cross the water to St. John with that rental car. That would be my best choice for traveling around the island. Yes, taxi cabs are available, but if you're looking for a true experience, you'll want to hire a car. If you just want to relax, pick a nice beach and book a hotel or Airden nearby.